Dolphins acquired Bradley Chubb in a fifth rounder for a first round pick in 2023, a fourth round pick in 2024 in Chase Edmonds, which massive trade. Biggest news from this that I see, the, the Dolphins had the third overall pick in 2020. Right. 49ers wanted a quarterback. They said, you know what? We're going to trade you three first round picks to get Trey Lance. No. Trey Lance has played. He started a total of four games and he's out for the rest of the year, as we know. Their first pick that they got was traded up to get Jalen Waddle. Their second second round pick that they got, second first round pick, I should say, they got Tyreek Hill on a trade for that. Right. And their third first round pick that they got from the 49ers turned into Bradley Chubb. Who do you think won that trade? Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, and Bradley Chubb, or Trey Lance? Yeah, I have to go with uh, Trey Lance. Yeah? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> of course not. Two Trey great Lance wide receivers. Uh, co- very raw quarterback who can't say on the field or the fastest wide receiver duo in NFL history and an amazing pass rusher. I mean, it's no debate. Bradley Chubb is really just the explosive element this defense was missing. Their defense have kind of fallen off, and that was because of the quarterback play. And sometimes when the offense isn't good, that affects the defense because they're out on the field longer. They're more exhausted. But now... You have two back. The defense is looking better. Um, they came out slow versus the uh, the Lions, but I think Bradley Chubb is going to add a whole other dynamic where he's going to be able to harass Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow and any other quarterback who may not want to get hit. Sorry, Bradley Chubb is coming for you. Yeah, that <laughs> that I mean, they shut down the Bills, you know, in division team. Their defense hasn't really played that bad overall. Now they get Bradley Chubb. That defense is going to be dangerous. Their offense, need I say more? And honestly, for a first rounder, I mean, that team, that's going to be basically a second rounder. Yeah. This next year. So, what does this say about the Dolphins for you? Like, I love like them going out, and getting Mike McDaniel's, and then being aggressive, trading for Tyreek Hill. It feels like this is really like. We think we can win now with Tua, and you're instilling yeah. a lot more confidence in a kind of Tua was kind of broken last year with all the Deshaun Watson talk. Like, yeah, I would hate to hear that. Like, if you're just in a building, if you work for ESPN, and then they key you keep hearing like them trying to replace you on a show with someone else, and then that comes out that that person's a rapist, so they can't trade for him, and then you keep your but job. they want to still yeah, but they want to still. Like, imagine if you're at your work right now and your boss tries to replace you with a rapist and they know he's a rapist and they still try and replace you with a sexual predator, all knowing. Like, how's that going to make you feel? And then they just let you keep your job. But then they fire that boss and put in a new one. So it's like, it's all good now. No, what I really like about the Dolphins in the so far, the very early but still very impressive Mike McDaniels era. Yeah. I mean, they fit on the draft picks. They made big swings. I mean, if you think about it, they took their first round pick that they got from the 49ers, an additional pick, and they went ahead and got Tyree Kill. No brainer. That first round pick already went to use. And then this first round pick turned into Bradley Chubb. It's like they're using, they still have draft capital. It's not like they're like dumping it like what the Rams do. The Rams bunch of first round pretty much whatever's left of their picks is what they're offering teams at this point which that this is a trade that didn't happen but they offer two first round picks for brian burns from right. the panthers so i think this is a lot smarter they're still getting some draft capital back for that and you're getting a guy who's a, already a stud right they lost chase edmonds and they replaced him with jeff wilson it's, who's better <laughs> it's kind of hilarious that chase edmonds went to the broncos i'm like oh no this is just where he's gonna go to die Exactly. It was really sad. I'm like, Chase Edmonds with, let's ride. I'm going to do high knees. Hey, everything's great in Denver. We hired Aaron Rodgers' beer buddy, and we have Russell Wilson, who's doing high knees. Yeah, for four straight hours on the plane. I'm like, So much to the point where the <laughs> the Ra- Ravens, after the Thursday night game, had to troll them. them. Yeah. They're like, Justin Tucker's like, yeah, we get Lamar Jackson here leading us on the plane with high knees. And now you have to suffer for that. So I feel really bad for Ch- um, for Chase Edmonds. Like, I wish no one uh, harm to their career, but 
this is just a tough break. That's basically the end of his career at this point because played really well in uh, Arizona, got his money in Miami, and now after eight games, they trade him out. Yeah, you go from Miami, warm weather, no state income tax, to Denver, a lot more expensive to live there. And on top of it, you're only there because of how bad Melvin Gordon is. Yeah. You're those sloppy seconds. And the Javante Williams injury. Yeah. So but it's like after what, there's a report that came out after this trade that he's going to be their third down back. And they're <laughs> going to be splitting carries with Melvin Gordon and Latavius Murray. So basically, he's their third running back. He went from being the number two. That number two role very quickly faded because yeah. now it's Raheem Moser. And then trades him to the Broncos, and he's now their third string guy. Yeah. And then they immediately replace you with Jeff Wilson, who's better. 